welcome to our first in a series of top three rewind location videos we have produced where we look back at our island series in a quick and easy short format video so it's hopefully easy for you to view. We reflect on areas that we have travelled in our nine week trip of Ireland and try to pick out our top three locations and that has not been easy. Hopefully these may be a consideration for an upcoming trip you may have and if not maybe just a few minutes for you simply to sit back enjoy a collage of memories that Ireland continuously delivered to us. The locations have been chosen maybe for a simple view or a walk or a place of interest that has simply invoked an emotion and a memory for us. So this video focuses on the top three locations on the south coast stretching from where we landed at Rosslare all the way through to the start of the Mizzenhead Peninsula. Whilst the Atlantic Way is the famous celebrity route in Ireland, don't forget the rest of Ireland as there are many gems. So top three, South Coast, Rosslare to Kinsale. And like Stu said, as ever, it's been a really tough ask to get the list down to our top three memories. But here we go and it's in no particular order. Number one is Hook Lighthouse. Now we had heard so much about this iconic location before we travelled to Ireland and there was a danger that it would under deliver. However, I can confirm it blew us away. For both of us, and in particular myself, this is one of the first locations of the trip that made me realise how special Ireland was going to be. And the setting is simply timeless and dramatic as it faces out towards the Atlantic. Now, while we were able to off-grid camp here, we knew the location was under pressure and we mentioned this in our videos. And since we have visited, I'm sad to say that you can no longer do so, but actually it doesn't surprise us. But we really hope they can find a way to allow responsible motorhomes and camper vans to stay, even if it's at reduced numbers. It seems wrong to deny people the joy of waking early in the morning and looking out across the waters. We all have to do better to find a balance to sharing these types of locations. With its backdrop of the iconic lighthouse and cafe, both of which should be visited with all its history, we simply enjoy sitting on the rocks looking out at the Atlantic Ocean, crashing against Ireland's coast. And it's a sight to behold, and you soon get lost in your own thoughts. And on calmer, sunny days, the gentle sound of the waves lapping against the rocks allows you to become part of the landscape. And a walk over the rock formation is an absolute must. And simply watching others enjoy this location is a great way to spend time. And Stu even managed to do some fishing. And the no modelling business that he now runs has really taken off. And in fact, I even asked Stu if we could go there on the way back for one last view before we returned home to the UK. And of course, thankfully, he obliged. So please visit there and spend the day having a picnic or an evening meal and watching the sunset. So number two memory location to visit is Cove near Cork. Now we stayed two nights in Harry at a nearby air and there is so much to see here and it's steeped in maritime history. And the Cove Heritage Centre is an absolute must in our opinion and it takes you on this amazing journey through time of Irish history and the role and the importance that the port of Cove had. And we really started to piece together key events in Ireland that stayed with us throughout the whole trip. Cove was the staging area for many journeys to the Irish people as they emigrated and many escaped the disastrous potato famine. And there are many maritime stories connected to this once busy port, like the Lusitania sinking by a German U-boat. It was off the coast of Ireland and many rescue boats brought back the bodies to the port. But the most famous of all was the Titanic as Cove was the last port of call before it sank. And the Heritage Centre and the Titanic Centre in the town tell the individual stories that brings the whole thing to life. And this was to be our first exposure on how well Ireland tells a story that pulls you in and keeps you engaged. It's the personal stories that stay with you. And who can forget the family name listed on those that were lost and the black and white photo of them. And then there's Cove Town itself. Now with its bars and cafes and restaurants where great food is served with a portion of Irish atmosphere. 
and our personal recommendation is Leonardo's Cafe with its fresh pasta which was absolutely to die for. Taking a stroll along the water's edge delivers the sight of all sorts of vessels, from the small to the large ships going to and from their business. And finally, our third choice is the town of Clonakilty, and we actually both felt that this is a town where we could live. It's got lots of history, culture and various festivals and events that draw people to this town. It's a colourful town that has many independent shops that should be browsed through along again with many great bars and eateries. And of course you may remember that Stu and eventually myself fell in love with the Clonakilty famous secret recipe puddings. And the factory tour is worth a visit even for nothing else other than the tasting that is included and I'm sure you'll find at least one of the puddings they make that you will like. So do you agree with our top three? Or are there other gems we should have added or indeed missed completely that's in your top three? Drop them in the comments as we may look at them when we return to Ireland. <laughs>